Um, I wonder if Leicester have got what they wanted, uh, Martin. Um, Martin's former club, of course, he's coached a few, Leicester City being one of them, and you did that, Martin, with a great deal of success. Mm. Um, in comes Enzo Maresca. Who is he? He's a man who's worked in Pep Guardiola's backroom staff, of course, in a highly successful time at Manchester City. What, what was your take when you heard that, Martin? Can the, the Pep Midas touch be brought to Leicester this season? This I, man I, has learned a lot. I genuinely don't know enough. Um, it is there is a, a world of difference between being a number one and a number two, and um, if I had another life to live over again, I'd love to be Sir Alex Ferguson's number two. I'd be staying in a job for about twenty five years. That'd be nice. <laughs> be really really great, and uh, and so the ups and downs the manager can take, and any little credit I can get from uh, via the players, you know, you might. Th- but overall, the difference between being the main man in charge and someone who's by your side is it's poles apart poles apart now does that not does that, that makes mean it sound risky it, no, it, well like it, well everything's a risk it doesn't matter is uh, any any um, any manager that they bring in is going to be a risk uh, Leicester City's ambition will become to to go straight back up again of course they have these advantages yes of course they're going to lose some players but e- even so uh, you cannot sit you cannot sit beside someone of Guardiola's ability and not pick up things. And Guardiola, I'm quite sure, has probably learned some things from Maresca. You know, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure if that's the case. Yeah. Now what it is, it is putting all of those thoughts he has, all of the conversations he's had, and I don't know whether he had a big say in the dressing room or not. I don't know whether Guardiola said to him, by the way, can you, t- you take the team talk here today? That might have happened. And if, he, if that has happened, that's good news for him because he will have had the experience of talking to players in the dressing room being there. But overall, it's, it, it is, it's... Um, it's forward thinking, isn't it? Look, well, at, look it, at some yes, of the other it, yes, pep disciples. Is. Company, yeah. Bosch, Burnley, yeah. really doing well after after Andle. Mikel Arteta. Yeah, of course. Of course, yeah. And and I think that Leicester will have taken that into consideration as well too. But you were, you're talking about two real quality players mm. who would have... That's the difference. You know, a company, fantastic footballer. Arteta was... Well, Arteta was maybe not as good as Arteta thought he was, but he was still a really <laughs> fine player. Really fine player. Yeah. And... Um, and so, but they and they had the pedigree behind them in that sense, so that their uh, their their immediate conversations in the dressing room would have would have had you know sure. some bite about sure. them. So Simon, if so you're I get, the top, I get, I get, the top of the house at Leicester, do you interview Maresca? Well, I tell you why you do because you look under the bonnet, and if you look under the bonnet with this fella and find out what his motivations were coming from Man City were and how he set his stall out, because he set his stall out. If you read his bio or you read into the background of it, the fact that he wasn't coming to Man City to be a number two. He told Pep that from the outset. He said, my ambitions, my, my direction of travel is I want to be a manager. Oh, brilliant. And that's a different number two mm. than you're not... They're very different roles. First mm. team uh, the manager yeah. and, the, and the number two have very different functions in life and very different characteristics. And so more often than not, and there's always exceptions, of course, a number two doesn't always make the greatest managers because they've had different responsibilities and different characteristics and different skill sets needed to deploy to manage the players in the way that the manager may want them to manage or to be the shoulder to cry on or the deliverer of bad news or whatever the number two gets used for in the framework of the management structure. I get a bit fed up with listening to this constant indexing backwards to, oh, he was Bielsa's coach. So he must be good. He worked with Mourinho, so he must be good. Ita Karanka was a Mourinho disciple, so he must be good. This person worked with Bielsa, so he must be good. Of course, you will if you if you spend your time with enthusiastic people in life, it's very difficult. It's a real gift to walk out of the room being unenthusiastic. If you spend your time with capable football managers, you will learn some of their traits, but you still have to have the leadership capability mm. that no one can coach you. No one can teach you how to be a leader. You are a leader or you're not. You can enhance your communication skills. You can enhance your football knowledge. But the alchemy that makes Martin O'Neill being able to connect with a situation or make a decision in a situation is only something that comes from him. And he mm. can't impart that wisdom. So now, leadership can't right. be coached. It can, no, you can enhance leadership. Mm. But natural leaders, yeah. guys that are really at the top of the tree, the real leaders, not the manufactured ones, the unique guys, the guys yeah. that got that extra little bit of Zest, the, the Brian Cloughs of the world that you can't you can't Absolutely. price them into an no. equation, the Pep Guardiolas that have got something in them that's very different, and then you have the Gareth Southgates of the world that would do a decent job, then you can give them some leadership skills, but they'll never have that 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 moment in time when there's a guy that wins and there's a guy that loses, and there's something in the gene. 
that separates the two and you can't buy it you can't bottle it you can't distill it you can't pretend yeah. to have it you can't borrow it you just have it or you don't where I'm, are you in all of this I know it's difficult to talk about yourself Martin well let's, let, let's, do, let, let, let's let, do it let, let us do it for, let's do it let's, let's take do it time out and talk about Martin <laughs> yeah um, go on well, I mean no, you, can, you, I, I how do you rate yourself no, as a leader no well let's, uh, it, it's not about uh, rating you it's, it's been able to go into a dressing room first of all addressing players and getting them to believe that what you're saying is the right course. That that is where you're going, and that is done. That is done by your personality. Simon just mentioned one of the great personalities ever in this game, and I and I make no apologies for mentioning him again. Brian Clough. Brian Clough was a, an absolute genius, but he had that. He had that. He had that something that other people lacked. He could step into that room, and and it wasn't exactly what he said. It was how he said it to you. He could have said good morning in four different ways and you would have thought, well, is it a good morning? Is it? Is it something like this? He had that and he had that all his time. And sometimes, you know, believe it or not, when he had some real down moments, like every other person, he maybe had some self-doubts and things like this here, but he never showed that. And this is the whole point. Then, interestingly, what we saw in 1975 for a year and a half was was glorified when Peter Taylor arrived at the football club because Taylor Taylor enhanced him again and he made him something almost like a demigod in many aspects. So he was really, really terrific. Simon, getting back to Simon's point, you're, you either have it or you don't have it. You can be enhanced. There's certain things that you can help along the way through a bit of experience, but you need that. You need that something in that dressing room where people are listening to you, particularly listening to you when you haven't been successful. Mm. That this is this is the whole point, getting them to believe. You've got to win football matches. Hey, everybody, it's, Alex Ferguson said the very first trophy he won after some time, he was in real serious difficulty and he won the FA Cup. Yeah, he he finally won. Yeah. It, no, no. You know, it gives you power. It gives you power. It gives you, and it gives you self-belief. It gives you self-confidence. gives you those things. And people then start, the players in the dressing room start to believe you. The, the, the big thing, I think, is to try and keep those players yeah. on your side yeah. when you haven't been winning. Martin, is this accurate? Mike's a Villa fan. Just as we head to the 12 noon bulletin, but I want to get this in because we're, John McGinn, we were talking earlier, signed a new four-year deal with Aston Villa this morning. Love John McGinn, a great lad. Mm. was with him at Glen Eagles. Villa suffered, says Mike. Villa suffered when you, Martin, left us. We, we never saw the final product and we faltered for 10 years after that. Got a good man in now, Unai Emery, but we suffered when Martin, when Martin left us. And I think he's still quite sore about that because we ne they never saw what you were aiming to end up doing yeah, does yeah. that still frustrate oh, you oh yeah, listen I, I, I've done that I, you know we talked about apologies being made here way back sometime I have you know I, I left the football club where I should have stayed I should have stayed at the time. You know, I kind of sort of relationship with myself and the and the owner <clears throat> and, and, and was was not great. But that's not good enough. I know getting back to the point, I remember I I, I should have stayed. You know, as Alan Parry once said to me, he said, Martin, that you would resign if someone nicked your car parking space. And there might be something in that to tell you the <laughs> truth. You know, so I'm just a cantankerous git at times. So so there's no question about it. All right, okay. So those are those are those are regrets, you know, and that 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 is done. But you still have to have that something in the dressing room. And I I I you know I am going to boast for four seconds here. I believe that I had that. Quite right. You're not wrong to say that.